Pasadena for our soccer. Uh, unite any major sporting event in the world, someone from Pasadena has done it. Whether it be in karate, we've done that too. Yes. Yes. We have done that. Um, track and field, we've done it to the highest level. And it's not just at the professional highest level, but it's been from the high school, CIF, to NCAA, to the pros, whether it be semi-pro, we have done major things across this planet. Uh, to find champions, that have come from Pasadena, you literally have to go to Europe. <laughs> because there's no other place that you have this many champions. Think about it. Pasadena is about 130 years old. And prior to uh, its founding, uh, Pasadena was still a city that was uh, promoting recreation and sports. This whole world. competition thing came much years later. But when it happened, it happened with a bang. Pasadena has been there Pasadena. You'd be hard pressed to find an athlete that has come from Pasadena that will say that I am the first and I am the last. The truth of the matter is, is that they are just one of many. We don't have the best athlete for any particular sport. We have just the best damn athletes in the world. We have these wonderful medallions made for each of our uh, inductees. And the first one is for those who drink the council. to dedicate myself to it and achieve, I guess, on every level. But along the road, I have somebody with me the whole time. My wife, Carolyn. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> my wife, yes. My, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and my sister, Yvonne, Simeon, love me. Hey. Every step of the way. My mentor, who, who spiritually kept me intact, keep me on the right road, my bishop, Bishop Milton White. When we started that thing in Blair, it was in our heads to beat one team. We had one team we wanted to beat, that was the DHS. For some reason, for two years, they just did beat us and it just irritated the dickens out of us. And we said to ourselves, we're going to dedicate ourselves to do one thing, to beat them. Did we know we were going to make history? No. Did we know we were going to win CIF 40 division? No. We just dedicated ourselves to win that one game and everything else fell into place. Now, the lifetime memories we have of that, we're out here talking today, Erickson, Jerry, all of us, and Joe Scholes, and Debbie, who's our pet commissioner here, uh, kept everything going. Chloe, oh my God. People in your life are put there for a reason. So you gotta take advantage and listen to what they have to say. And I'm just thankful to be here to be part of us for the years that have passed and pray that uh, everybody gets a chance to do what I did. Well, hello. Um, first, I want to thank you for acknowledging the accomplishment that we've all worked so, so hard for. I really appreciate it. And we'll be proud to be a John Muir Mustang. Um, I live in Las Vegas now. I've been here. I've been there for over 30 years. I'm here with my wonderful husband and personal trainer, Reggie. And my best friend and my cousin, my sister, my girl. And we ran track together on the relay. 
Joe teachers crazy, you know, <laughs> switching our names and getting no. in trouble a little bit. But good times to remember. Um, I miss being in Pasadena. Um, I miss seeing my, I call my high school mom. Lana Cantrell's mom that helped us get the track meets on time. <laughs> um, but I really thank you and I appreciate this great accomplishment. that Miss Contrell is the only female individual state champion from John Deere High School. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to give things to God. I'm going to give things to my family the foundation. My father who told me never to give up. Michael Jackson who trained with me on early morning to my grandmother who wish I got my steam crown <laughs> to my mom when I fell down and got up and still won yeah. and to my aunt. thank you it's been a pleasure and honor to be a part of the squad and to represent Pasadena I'm truly truly thankful and I'm truly blessed thank you so much I really want to thank a couple of people. I want to thank, obviously my mother because she has been my backbone. Whenever just we talk, I, I, I have you. Whatever you want to do, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. My brother, my sister, this is my sister-in-law, they're here. I have my personal rooting team that always came and followed me. And of course, the lady that actually got me, Miss Eddie Newman. Where is she? Right here. Oh, yeah. Since the seventh grade. Yeah. Oh, wow. so, yeah. But um, if you have kids and they tell you that I'm going to go to the Olympics or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, believe them. When oh I God. saw the 72 games, I was watching it on TV. First time ever seeing it, I said, I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Don't know what I'm going to do. Don't know. I just said, I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, that's what I work towards. And so if you have somebody that, that they say they have a vision, not necessarily a vision, but a desire, a strong desire, support them. That's right. Because you never know what's going to take. Right. And I can say that you got I, I, wildest dreams, and I'm going to take too long, but I never, ever thought you, I, that I would be here. And I, I thank you guys so, so much for following me, supporting me, everything, because I, you, you don't know how much this means to me, because I never thought that I would ever be here. Thank you. I think I was Coach Brownfield's biggest headache. Yeah. <laughs> I know I was. <laughs> but he was the father that I did not have. Mm -hmm. he made, I had my tonsils taken out, and I was supposed to be at home for a week, but he came and picked me up and said, we don't need you to talk in practice. <laughs> I am very blessed to be here. I raised six kids. Wow. Um, I have four grandkids. I have a daughter who's running track for San Diego State. Wow. That's why I was late. <laughs> but I am, like I said, I'm very, I wanted them to come, but she was tired. I wanted her to get her rest. And she has to run again tomorrow, but I'm very grateful. Thank you guys so much for me. <laughs> Thank you so much. They call me the Great Elk because the Great Elk antlers fall off every year and grow bigger. So that's how I look at my life. Um, track was good uh, for 10 years. I didn't get uh, to compete uh, at the Olympics, but I'm, I'm a legend in track and field. When I run into people, they like, you're a living legend. Um, I have a daughter that's 11. She doesn't run. I think it's too early. Um, I run a wellness company, so I'm an herbalist, nutritionist, and a cook. 
So I cook for Maxine Waters and a few other millionaires. Wow. Um, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm real good. But I try to evolve every year to make myself better. For my family, I want to thank my mom, of course, God. But my mom, she was a, a principal, a Delta. She was a principal for Linwood High School in Duarte. And she was there for me. You know, take me back and forth to track me. She just moved to Georgia, actually. Um, so I definitely want to thank her. I want to thank everybody for coming out. And um, I feel powerful. Yeah. I'm glad to be around everybody. So, thank you. <laughs>
the team and the championship, it all fell together. Wow. And like we all like brothers now, and we can tell the stories, and I'm just thankful to be a fan. Hi, I'm Jim Lynch, and I'll represent the defense. <laughs> But I'm curious, Jimmy McAllister, where he got the idea that Charles Phillips is quiet? When did that start? <laughs> no, hey, we, we did, as Ted just mentioned, Billy, I mean, we were, we were a tight team, and we loved each other, we counted on each other, and uh, did everything together. It didn't take a season, it took three years. That's right. And we were all there together, we, we went through it, we had outstanding coaches, Pete Yoder. We have the honor of having Norm Morrow with us today. Yeah, yeah. Bob Harris, Tom yeah. Payton, oh man, Jack Doug Aguilar. Erickson, Jack and Jack Aguilar. But uh, Doug Erickson, Gary, uh, Tom Payton, he just beat us into the ground. He was a killer. But, but you know, if you know, it didn't kill you, it made you stronger. So we're still alive. You're wasting it. Anyway. We, we did. We had a we had a tight group. We're still tight. I mean, we love each other. We did them too, and, and it, it made a big difference, I think. And, and uh, it was a special time that hasn't been repeated. And, and uh, you know, I think we all still love each other, and, and we're proud of what we accomplished in that. Time. It's great to be here with everybody. a biggie back. I'm Gerald Scholes. I was on the line. Uh, I'm, what's interesting to me is a lot of the guys have already spoken. I got the same memories. In 10th grade, I thought those guys were superstars. They're still, I mean, when I think of Gerald Pierre and Hank Simpson, Delton Lewis, Marty Tanagawa, we, uh, the young guys, the 10th graders, uh, in between like the scrimmaging, we'd get together and we used to kind of, who'd they take off? I mean, they, we were dropping all the time, and we were always wondering who it was, you know. But, you know, we went back out there, and by the time we were seniors, there was nobody made us scared. That was, that was Blair in them days. Uh, Pasadena High School, I remember we were before the game, on the pregame, you could hear a pin drop 20 minutes foot. I mean, we were, I mean, I was dry heaving, and all of a sudden I looked up, and the whole team was like that. <laughs> All right, and, uh, and uh, I guess the last memory I'll talk about was uh, Bishop Amok game, and it was, well, I got one for Charlie. Yeah. One of the things in that Lakewood game is, uh, you know, you got to know Kenny Lipkin, our quarterback was fiery, and our cadence was, go, ready, hit, go, ready, hit. Charlie was, go, ready, hit. <laughs> The, probably the best uh, memory I have was that Bishop of my game, and it had to do with our school. Uh, you've heard this today. We were a tight school. I mean, Pasadena, 1,200. We had like 330. We were baby, but uh, we were small. So it was always that that extra little thing that you know it was kind of American. We're gonna get them, you know, kind of stuff. <laughs> anyway, we're we're going back and forth with Bishop of my. And we started the third quarter, and we uh, it was a third and it was kind of long. It was midfield, and uh, we ran a sweep left, and I couldn't get my guy. I'm, I'm on the ground. Hermit goes out in there, you know, and you're hoping he can get it, and about about three guys hit him. And he was down, you know, we had to punt. And I was like, man, what's happening here? And all of a sudden, I looked up, and I heard all this screaming. It was the Bishop of Mott's side. And they're all, ah! you know, they're all going crazy. And I was like, huh? So it, it just kind of hit me. Anyway, I kind of went back, and as I'm going back, I look at the Blair side. And they're all standing up, and they're quiet. And I, I didn't know what they were feeling. You know, they were a little shocked, but, you know, they're behind us. And I felt like, man, we're letting them down. And I went over the sideline. It was just one of those moments in a game where you start, you'd start bearing down. You start going, man, I've got to be perfect. It's got no mistake. Get everything out of your mind. And I looked up, and almost the whole offensive line was just like me. <laughs> and we were unstoppable after that. Mm -hmm. We just moved the ball. Mm -hmm. All right? And again, I love all these guys, and it's a great memory, and it, it's a privilege. Oh. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Shaw. I played center, number 52, in case you've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to say first of all, when you stand on the shoulders of giants, life is a lot easier. Um, I'll leave you with this. My football career started as a piccolo player in the Blair <laughs> High School marching band. <laughs> Until the day that Pete Yoder came over and said, I want to talk to you. And that's when I started playing football. I owe it to all these guys here in terms of how I went on with football and gained scholarship to USC and all that. But there's a quote I love and I want to say it to you now. Fame is but a vapor. Popularity is pure luck and money takes wings. All that's left is character. Oh, I have to speak? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the odd man out. I, was, I came onto this team when I was a senior and ended up playing, actually. It was a, a kind of a miracle. I'm Play sorry, well. Jim. <laughs> but I built, took that experience of being with these guys, winning the rest of my life. You, get, you know, my, my family life was horrible. To take a winning experience and then go forward, everything you learned at this, this, this game, game of life, you can use that same thing and build on it and make something out of yourself. And that's, that's a very positive thing and I'm thankful for that, for all these guys. Aww. Thanks. Ruth.